Hello, today is Friday, March 25th. It's about noon here in the New York City area. And here we wanted to talk about some of the flows that we've been seeing this past week. It's been really quite interesting, the dynamic shift between the volatility that we had throughout early March into basically the FOMC and OPEX period last week. All that volatility got flushed out and we're seeing a lot more speculative risk taking this week along with a collapse in implied volatility. And we kind of want to dig into those different aspects. So first, in regards to the uh, the speculative risk we've been seeing, the good old fashioned uh, call gamma squeezes have been back in place. People are surging into uh, short dated call options. We flagged this in Tesla and NVIDIA earlier this week. And you can see that here on Twitter, we were talking about this. And if you look at these moves, the, the, the squeeze in particular was uh, on the 22nd in Tesla, and you could see the stock movement. I mean, this stock movement was just really an unbelievable move. And this was predominantly people trading very short data, that is Friday's call options. Now, once that call buying stops and, and pulls back, then you get a lot of decay with those positions, right? And then you see the stock gives some of those gains back. Now, the weapon of choice on the 24th was yesterday, uh, was NVIDIA. There was also a big GameStop squeeze after the CEO came out and bought some uh, shares himself in the open. That led traders to want to pile into these short dated calls. Again, same thing in NVIDIA yesterday. So this speculative behavior, we've not seen this for quite some time. Uh, this was very common last year and uh, we have not seen it until again this week. Um, it's really come back in fashion. Now, what you're looking at here is AMC and there's two lines on this chart. One is the orange line and that shows what the real time Delta hedge impact is from call options. And then there's a blue line on here, which is the hedging from puts. So as you can see, as the market opened, traders piled into call options. Now the idea here is that as they're buying calls, dealers or market makers have to buy the stock in kind and that can boost the stock higher. What you'll notice is that in and around here, you get the call buying really tails off, right? You can see that happen. And when the indicator then switches sideways, which is flat or neutral, that says that the call flow has shut off, right? Either the call flow has gone neutral or those call buyers have really stopped. And the support for the stock the support that helped launch the stock up here is now gone and you get this mean reversion in the stock price. So that is a function uh, of the options market and hedging flows, we believe. And you can see that happen time and again, where you get this rush of calls into the market or into a single stock, that call buying uh, pulls back or pauses and then you'll see the stock fade. And this happens not only on a intraday basis, as, as you can see again here on the hero indicator, but it also happens on a longer term basis as well. We did, we've done some extensive videos about this in the past, wherein you'll get a rush of calls on Monday and Tuesday that'll prop a stock up. And then because traders are pushing into the Friday call options, right? The closer we get to Friday, that charm kicks in, right? That time decay kicks in and, and the stocks mean revert a little bit. Now, the other aspect of implied volatility, which we're finding quite interesting here is the collapse of realized volatility. So we're gonna flip over to one of our subscriber charts. Now I wanna pause here. If you wanna try out Hero or you wanna see charts like what you see on your screen here, we update them every day. You can get a free seven day trial subscription to any of our memberships at spotgamma.com. But what you're seeing here is realized volatility in a couple of different flavors. The ultra short dated, so to speak, is the five day and you can see that red line here. So this is obviously capturing what's happened most recently and you can see how sharply this is down. Now that figure, that five day realized volatility is just a six and it is because the returns over this past week have been very small in the S&P 500. This bottom histogram plots the returns over the last five days and you can see all of them are grouped in the zero to 1% returns. And that's versus the last 30 days, which has had a wide distribution of price returns, obviously tons of volatility with uh, the geopolitical situation and the FOMC and all that. But what's so interesting is the FOMC comes out as a bit more hawkish the geopolitical situation still exists and suddenly volatility has dropped. Well, why is that? Well, that's because a ton of puts expired. We did an extensive video on this in early March and we said the volatility is gonna persist until puts expire, puts expired, and now you can see the result is this. There's hardly any market movement. Now we'll link to that put video in the description as well. Our point here with this is that realized volatility from a one month perspective is still up around 27. And if you look at the VIX, it's trading right around 22 right now. So 22 implies roughly a one and a half percent S&P move. That's what the options market is pricing in. And you have to keep in mind that the VIX uses a 30 day window of options to calculate its level of volatility. So if you look at the ultra short dated volatility, it is dropping like a rock. The 30 day volatility still has all that sort of early March 
uh, movement in it. So that's why we have a 27 roughly level of implied volatility. And we still have the VIX, which is which is at 22. But what we're seeing and where we're seeing the real vol crush is in the shortest dated options. Essentially, what's happening now is traders are coming in and they're saying, look, the risk of a really dire situation in Russia happening today is pretty low. So let me sell all the volatility I can for today. We mentioned in our morning note that the at the money straddle for the SPX was at around $35, which is just 75 basis points of movement for the day is what, is, a, is what that roughly implies. So if you look at the VIX term structure, you can see that here's the VIX again, roughly around 22. And the rest of the curve, the backdated months are all priced much higher. So this is contango, obviously. And as we approach VIX expiration, which is not for a few weeks, the gap between VIX and that front month future needs to come in but what's happening that you couldn't really see here in the S&P is that anything that's roughly five days out is getting sold very hard. So we're getting this five day volatility that just sells off even harder. And this was a situation that we saw a lot last year where there was a steep contango. And as we sort of roll forward, people have more confidence to sell the really short dated options. They want to hold some longer dated protection uh, because of the geopolitical situation or higher rates or whatever it may be. So people aren't comfortable selling longer dated options, but they are comfortable selling the stuff that's just a few days out under the idea that, look, what can happen today, right? Now, what is the big issue with this? On your screen here, we have our view of the S&P 500. We put this out uh, the week before expiration. That was last week. And we said, look, you can draw parallels between the, the January expiration, which is here, um, and when big puts expired, we got a massive rally. That rally was a roughly the same magnitude as our current rally. It stalled. There was a little bit of whipsawing and then boom, we went back down into the uh, geopolitical headlines. And then there was this, again, this lower bound we talked about extensively on our site. But lo and behold, we have the OPEX, the March OPEX, and the market shoots higher. And we're roughly, we roughly now have the same magnitude of rally as in January. Now, what the OPEX did, what March OPEX did is it cleared out all the put positions that were in here. So our view was that, look, the market never broke a lower bound, despite the fact that the geopolitical situation uh, was made much worse. The market never punched through a, a lower bound. It held. There was some support there. So that support now has been removed. We've rallied sharply. And should the market find a reason to sell off again, all of those puts need to be replaced and with the VIX at, say, 22, it can go a lot higher now, right? The, the, the idea that the market was well hedged has now receded some. And so now we say that there is this air pocket. On top of that, you have this speculative short dated options selling that we're seeing now. And the call buying we mentioned at the start, that speculative short dated behavior, that adds to what's called jump risk. Essentially, the idea that the market is not positioned for some type of really bad news and big selling now. So we can catch all of these traders off guard. It'll play into this idea that there is no put protection really, or, or the put protection is greatly uh, reduced, I should say, which could lead to spikes in volatility and, and a really quick sort of vacuum lower. Now, that doesn't mean that the market has to take this bait. Our point here is that if the market gets a reason to sell, that sell-off can be violent. There are times when gamma is high and positions are supportive of the market and can and pad some of that drawdown, we don't view that as the current situation. So again, we don't think that there's a reason for the market to sell off at the moment. It hasn't taken the bait, uh, but if it does start to slide, the speed and velocity of that selling can catch some people off guard. And that is sort of what we are uh, trying, that, that, that's the point we're trying to uh, relay here. Now at the moment to the upside, we have this 4,600 call wall. Everybody's focused and talking about this 4510 uh, JP Morgan collar put, right? That's decaying and expires on the 31st. The bulk of flow right now supports a pinning. So if you have to get an edge to something, it's a pinning in and around this 4,500 to 4,530 level into 331. But note that if we do start to break down below 4,500, particularly 4,475, there can be a lot of speed and velocity uh, to selling. And that is our point here. Uh, the market doesn't have to take that bait to sell off, but if it does, People have to reposition back into put options. These short dated punters can get blown out uh, and that can lead to a, a pretty violent move lower. So we hope this video is helpful. Again, if you have any questions, please email us at info at spotgamma.com. Go to spotgamma.com to get a free trial of any of our subscriptions. Uh, you get a nice seven day trial there. Check out the hero indicator and you can also visit us at spotgamma on Twitter. Thanks.